All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the Nebraska Fighting Game Community Quarantine Cast. I'm your host, MKL, and I'm here with my two Lincolnite cohorts, Sicko Dame and King George. How we doing, boys? Doing good. Same old, same old. Let's start off with uh, first, Dame, how's the uh, work from home going? Oh, uh, it's been going. Um... Honestly, I haven't been doing too much work with all the distractions around, but I think they're going to have us come back next week, and I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, so I might just uh, take some days off. (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. There's some interesting shit going on. And uh, how's Single Barrel going, George? Uh, It's all right. It's pretty dead, so it's pretty boring, actually, but we're hanging on. Is it still uh, takeout only? Still take out only. I mean, they made it like uh, it's mandated now. So now we don't even have a choice. Oh, Jesus Christ. So it affected you bowls, and I'm <laughs> out here still fucking processing tax returns. Fucking <laughs> God damn it. Um, I mean, yeah. At the, like the, at the least, it's mandated until, what, May 6th? So May 6th? May 6th. You can't do sit-in in the restaurants anymore. It has to be take out or carry out or deliver. I didn't realize it was that long. That's a long fucking time. Yeah, I don't know. The management have been, like, debating whether or not they want to stay open that whole time. Because, I mean, it costs a lot to run a restaurant just, you know, equipment-wise and everything. So, and we're not making that much money. Yeah, I can't imagine most restaurants are going to stay open the whole time. It's time to collect some Trump bucks for sure. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's like, for restaurants, it's definitely a scary time for the smaller ones. Like, you know, the chains will be fine. They'll still be Applebee's and everything. But if it's, like, independently owned, then you got to kind of figure out how you're going to keep that money flow. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Well, I mean, we missed last week CDC mandated, you know, but we're back in action now. At the IRS? On the the podcast. (laughs) Oh, the podcast. (laughs) Um... Well, let's see. There's actual topics to cover this week, unlike last week. So, um, off the bat, I want to say congrats, George, for materializing to an offline event, even if it was just <laughs> you and me in my living room. Even, in the, <laughs> even during the quarantine. Even during the quarantine. We, we, uh, we did a big. We continued when the tradition. When there was no virus, I was out there. I was just staying home all the time, and now there's a virus. I'm just going out. <laughs> if, I get, if I get corona, I'm blaming you. <laughs> um let's uh get to this little factoid shit um the only good one i could think of in 15 seconds was uh hmm, favorite non fighting game video game let's uh start off with mr sicko dame favorite non fighting game game huh it can let's even see. be a board um, game for all i can off the top of my head, um, I'm actually going to cheat a little bit and mention a couple games. So uh, both of these are fantastic games, in my opinion. They came out pretty recently. Um, as for like the overall experience of playing the game, I'd say like Nier Automata Free is my favorite game. Fantastic soundtrack. Um, really enjoyed the storytelling, and it has you in- emotionally invested in the characters. Um, it's a game that just pulls you into its world. But in terms of like gameplay, I've been really enjoying uh, Sekiro. Now, I know in our last podcast, oh, we chatted all over fucking Souls-like games, but hear me <laughs> out. <laughs> the posture mechanic is pretty rewarding when you finally master it. And, you know, comparing to just fucking running and dodging and other Souls-like games, there's like an emphasis on parrying and shit. And it looks good and it feels cool. So it rewards you for mastering that. So those are my couple of games. I don't know, man. That ooh, this was a souls free zone and you kinda, you kinda <laughs> I, mean, broke. I don't I know George is not happy the about this. Trust. He'll mention Monster Hunter probably. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, George, buy me some time so I can think of my answer. Uh I wouldn't say I don't really know what my favorite game is. I like a lot of games a lot, but I mean as far as like games I really enjoy Monster Hunter series, uh, Dragon Quest series. Uh, I don't know. I, there's a lot of games I really like, but I don't know if I have a favorite favorite. Yeah, I'm just realizing that this is really fucking hard. Um, 
let's go really peak boomer. Mention your bullet hell games you've been playing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we'll get into that. They haven't quite attained favorite game status, so I'm gonna go peak boomer and say Super Mario Brothers three on the regular Nintendo. It's a great game. It's a perfect game, in fact. Really. Uh, perfect. Huh? Game. Replay it anytime, man. It's just the stage designs are so good. The power-ups are so fun. I don't know how you could really go wrong with the, the third one, man. What, are you more of a world fan? Uh, I would say definitely world over three. World, you just literally fly through every stage. Well, you just don't do that. <laughs> That's what I hear every Super Mario World fan say. They're like, well, just don't do that. It's like a... <laughs> just don't it, do it. It's, it's Fox true. Command Throw, you know? It's, it's a bug. <laughs> um yeah well you know i guess that's another little tidbit about us I'm more 3d mario than myself though. 3d mario oh let, let's move yeah, on let's get out of this zone <laughs> for sure <laughs> um well first off um we kind of went over corona i just want to get it straight out the way out the gate um is there anything canceled fighting game related or any new weird shit going on you guys know of uh, there was that Capcom Pro Tour, like, canceling its first half that came out yesterday. Oh, yeah. And, a bummer. uh, Tokyo Olympics are postponed, and Street Fighter was in it, so. Yeah, so Street Fighter's fucked. Really weird. Starting off the season in July and having Evo come up not too long after that. When is Evo? It's like, I wonder if Evo's really still going to happen. I have a hard time imagining Evo happening. I think it'll happen. It's like four months out. Combo Breaker is really on the chopping board, though. That's so. the sus one. I think I have faith in Evo for sure, but I don't. I I would take bets on Combo Breaker not being a thing. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see Evo happening. I think this thing is going to last for a while. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Uh, again. Yeah. Not uh, virologist. Yeah, it's hard to say. <laughs> it's peaked. According to other countries that we follow their trends, it's probably going to peak in a few weeks here. Well, America, I did read so. that we are the le- in the lead now for highest number of yeah. cases now. USA number Doing one. Big. We always love <laughs> to be number one, no matter what. And uh, it's causing the economy to crash, and thus there's a stimulus package, so... All y'all is gonna get twelve hundred bucks in two weeks. Spend it wisely. What are you spending the Trump bucks on? Mm. I'm gonna go with the boring answer and say pay off my debts. <laughs> Good. You're an adult. Uh, I mean, I'll say. See, I was thinking of because I mentioned in the chat, I was thinking of either playing the keyboard or the saxophone. Well, it turns out saxophones are really expensive. Oh yeah. So maybe I'll put it towards that, but probably <clears throat> towards some kind of keyboard. You could get a shitty keyboard for forty bucks and a saxophone and just go ham during quarantine. True, true. But I saxophone. didn't realize saxophones were that expensive. Like you could get like it seemed like you could get like a decent like keyboard for like you know, like the decent one, like everybody recommends it for like four hundred, five hundred. Yeah. But, like, a decent, like, saxophone is, like, 2000 if you get it new. Oh, yeah. And if you want to get, like, used, then it's, like, depends. But it's, like, 900 I saw, like, 700 ish That's crazy. Yeah, that's why I, everyone you know, had to rent be a, them. This is going to be a nice hobby. This is going to be a nice hobby. And then I was like, oh, shit. $2,000? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that I mean, on the like back there's, like, saxophones that's, like, there's, like, saxophones that are, like, 300 But if you read the online, it was, like, you know, you get what you pay for. So don't buy the $300 saxophone. <laughs> That's kind of the case with anything, but I started on, like, some $30 guitar that was hilariously broken, and it was fine. I didn't know the difference because, you know, you don't at that stage. Right. See, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, if I'm, like, a complete beginner, is it really that important that my sound quality is, like, great? No. I mean, maybe it's, like, a thing about, like, I don't know, some saxophone mechanics that I don't understand. I guess I don't play saxophone, so I don't know. But maybe, I don't know. You should look into Enough renting about music, it, though. Renting it for like a month or two. See, that's what, that's the other thing I was gonna look at. Go to like Guitar Center or something and see if they have one for rent. 
Yeah, make sure that you actually want to play saxophone before dropping two G's. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Expensive, uh, expensive hobby. So, we're all fucking quarantined. You guys are actually straight up pretty quarantined from your job, even. Um, I'm still going to work, so. Yeah, but I mean, it's like a different sort of work, for sure. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I guess, how do you deal with like skill atrophy since we don't have any locals it's it's bothering me now i can't play online you gotta go online fuck no i played online yesterday and online. i learned nothing no 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 you gotta play games with good online like melty blood guys you gotta get on it <laughs> damn you did oh wait does koi Jaime not have good net code it, it does not oh okay, well, it, not have good <laughs> okay. <laughs> it can't win them all so you guys just need to get into a monster on it it's kind of like a fighting game i swear <laughs> Nothing's getting me off bullet hells until I get the Trump bucks, at least. So, um, Dame, do you know anything about the uni patch? Um, just browsing through Twitter on my timeline. I know, um, just from Cal's perspective, they buffed walled, but a lot of the interest has kind of died down, like, locally. I don't know if that's, like, a part of the coronavirus or because of like the patches or what's been going on but uh one character i was interested in kind of trying to pick up was uh, enki do um they buffed him reach recently in uh uniclear but now he got nerfed back down again without even seeing a major so that kind of killed my <laughs> motivation for wanting to pick up that game again it was just a bug he wasn't right. supposed to be good <laughs> so the thing with the thing is with like uni it seems like they're fixing some things and then introducing some completely broken bullshit with other characters. So these patches are kind of sus IMO from what I've heard. Well, I personally think all fighting game balancing is super suspect, except surprisingly, maybe Capcom. Capcom has been on a roll lately, like for the past year or two. And that's weird because Capcom used to be horrible at patching stuff. But Tekken's terrible, Soul Calibur's terrible, Uni's terrible. What Grand Blue hasn't gotten a patch yet, but I'm not expecting right. anything good. Cross your fingers for this April patch, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Arx is balancing. You never know. Yeah. So I don't know. That's another why a reason why I'm a proponent of let shit shake out for a bit before you patch so you don't knee jerk patch but i don't know um i don't think any of us are really that intimate with uniclear however they're however they're saying this new one um it just surprises me how dead the game is here now after being like one of the top billing games for so long that patch killed it Going into yep, the next... scattered off to Melty Blood now. <laughs> yeah, everybody went off that to a game that is 18 years old. <laughs> um, on the anime note, Guilty Gear had another reveal. They revealed Mrs. Hare and Mr. Chicken Nuggets fan character Zotto One. What do we think of those two? I think they look pretty cool. I mean, every time they like reveal a new character in uh, Strive, I'm taken aback by how good everyone looks in that game, in that new engine. You know, with those two characters, they said they couldn't do it. They couldn't add an Oki character in Strive, but, you know, here we are. <laughs> add both of them. I'm curious to see how much of their play style like, they retain from Exerd, as we only like see like a little bit of how they played, but... It's certainly going to be, I mean, even from the trailer, we got the gist that they're going to at least operate similarly to the past, because uh, Milia has her hair whip thing that can cross, Zotto has Eddie, so they're going to play at least somewhat set play, I'm pretty sure. Um, the thing I'm really jealous about is that they're... Not all of the characters that have been revealed, but most of them are getting like pretty heavy redesigns. Like Milia looks completely different. Zotto looks pretty 
normal. Similar-ish. Yeah. I think Eddie got a bit of a redesign. It looks freaking goofy yeah. now. <laughs> but, like, most of the games that I'm playing are more, like, looking back to, like, oh, the classic looks or, like, Tekken where they literally don't do anything to the characters until <laughs> a, a full year after the arcade <laughs> release. Um, yeah, so I'm happy that they're, like, from the ground up doing kind of like a Tekken 4, like, rebooting the cast, giving the game a new fresh look. I'm I'm still excited. I uh, I'm really hoping that they pull through on this one for sure. Yeah, Amelia's even had a couple of redesigns now. One from Exert and now from Strive. Oh yeah, I like that's that right. they downsized their hat so so it looks normal now. <laughs> I did forget that that really hat dangerous. is a new thing. <laughs> it's been so long. Um it also was announced a little bit before that trailer that rollback netcode is in the works for Strive. And that is a big deal. It's huge. Um, so there's like no bad news coming out about Strive. I don't know how, if you're a fighting game fan, you're not just a little bit interested in this one. Because, I mean, it's... It's playing you like a fiddle if you're a fighting game fan. It's giving you everything you want. Except for Oki. Except for <laughs> taking that out. Well, remains to be seen. I, I saw a hair whip cross up, potentially. <laughs> I saw Eddie doing shit on screen, maybe. Maybe. Maybe you can get something yeah. like that. We'll have to see. And we'll have to see if Faust has meteors. If he has meteors, you're getting mixed. Um... I guess that goes into Grand Blue because Grand Blue also added like a more elaborate trailer for what's his name, Jita. Uh, Jita's the Fem Grand character, and Soriz is the Soriz. That's his name. The old man dude. I'm pretty excited for him. He looks pretty sick from that trailer. I thought he was um, gonna be like a uh, a Dudleyish character, but he looks like like a Slayer almost. Yeah, he's like he's definitely 100% brawler type, and um, I did read a little bit of uh, his like kit on the Grand Blue versus re website, and apparently his like unique ability is to armor all attacks besides throws and supers, and then he has an install which increases his defense when he activates it, depending on how many times he like armored or whatever throughout the match. Fuck yeah! So kind of he's got a Q gimmick. mechanic. <laughs> I'm hell into that. It can't come soon enough because I do feel like a lot of people are hitting a brick wall with Grand Blue where they're like, damn, I just can't find a character. Or like, I've I've seen all there is to see with the game. So I think it is good that they're releasing characters monthly because otherwise I think the meta would stagnate quite a bit. Right. Are you still playing Grand Blue, George? Uh, I haven't really been playing that much lately. I mean, the new character looks kind of cool, but I doubt he's my type. Who is this guy? a lot so far. Playing online instead of offline is like a completely different experience. <laughs> That's the problem. Is like I've lost a lot of my my hope, not hope for the game, but like will to play because the only way I can play is online. So. Yeah, I'm a little bit sad about that, but Eric sometimes comes over. Um, I, I actually need to start playing this game again because apparently I caught a hundred dollar first to ten in it. Oh yeah. <laughs> what? Uh -huh. I collect these apparently. Uh, Squishy, w you know, it was the usual. Lincoln <laughs> goes to a random channel on the Discord, and we're all pissing and moaning and shit posting as usual half-heartedly, mostly jokingly. And apparently, so I said something wrong, or Danny said something wrong, and Squishy's like, hey, homie, you fucking toxic. Hit me up with this money match. And I was like, all right. So, yeah. Man, do I need to start spending some time in some of these other chains? <laughs> all you yeah, gotta start picking fights with the anime kids, yeah. and you'll start a money match. All you gotta <laughs> do is talk enough shit to three, where... One. Somebody that's like 22 years old takes it the wrong way, and then boom, you got a first to 10 with $100 yeah, on Mike's the line. Mike's starting fights with all these Zoomers. <laughs> Mike's just lying in his pockets. <laughs> I'm just a goddamn Zoomer bully. 
But you know, I'm just I, making that secure in the bag. I don't have <laughs> this one in the bag since I'm not a Grand Blue player. But you know, me and him played online, which is a different game. And the first ten games was nine to ten in his favor. So it's closer than. You know, it's going to be a good match if it happens at this rate because of fucking coronavirus. I'm going to start hosting online tournaments at this rate. Well, that's the thing. I mean, yes. I would love to have online locals, but what's the point with when every game I play is rollback netcode? <laughs> yeah, and it's split between PS4 and PC, so, you know. It, true, true. That's the real problem. It would be a nightmare, sadly. I think we all just literally might have to become Melty Blood players. <laughs> we got a head start. <laughs> um, the only event I know that's actually happening and not getting canceled is Daigo announced another Kiminomochi. Like, what is it? Kimono a month? Michi? It's a month after the last one? <laughs> it's so fast. But I don't think he's announced anything that is happening at it yet, as far as I know. Yeah, I don't think anything is concrete. But Daigo does not give a shit about the coronavirus. He apparently. doesn't, no. <laughs> but um, if you don't know what that is, that's kind of a... It's kind of hosted and curated by Daigo. And it's more of an MMA-style tournament where... He, he kind of picks and chooses great rivalries or storylines in the series and presents them. So, like, the last one had uh, Punk versus Infectious for, like, some fucking random reason. I don't honestly know. That was a wash. Yeah, and it was a super said. wash. <laughs> they had, uh, like, the two most prolific Super Turbo players go at it. That was super hype. I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one. Um, They had some some lady play battle garega for like an hour it was super dope too that's why i'm playing bullet hells now um that reignite your flame yeah <laughs> for bullet hells but <laughs> it's super sick and it's 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 totally own thing so i do recommend it i think it's gonna be in april from what i heard so i'm just hoping i see tokido i want to see like tokido oh, yeah versus Machibo. That would be sick. What's Tito's what? been there once, I think. I think Maybe so. A couple times. Yeah. Tito played Daigo. Daigo one year. Uh-huh. And he got fucked up. Daigo is strangely, like, super hard to beat in a first to ten. Even though he's not great at Street Fighter V. It's the, just Daigo, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now the saddest news of all. Virtua Fighter 6 was not announced. In fact, they announced <sighs> some dumb reimagining of an old 90s Sega commercial guy. Okay, some people like this Sega Shiro guy. I, I don't know shit about him, to be honest. So, yeah, the original mascot dude was Sagata Shiro, and apparently this is his son. The, well, the actor's son is playing uh, <laughs> Sega Shiro, so it's a whole... The Japanese probably love it, but the references are lost on us Americans. That's and what we're I just mean. mad we don't get Virtua Fighter. <laughs> yeah, we just... <laughs> so even the six highlighted and everything. <laughs> this uh, yeah, that was pretty weird. <laughs> I the... didn't think it was going to be Virtua Fighter just because a lot of the comments were saying it was probably this Sega Shiro guy, so I was like, I'm going to get my hype up. Yeah, even looking at, looking at the URL that that page was hosted on, it said, like, Sega Shiro, too, so I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, but there is a silver lining where they did say that this is their 60th anniversary and they're going to have a lot of announcements in April and for the rest of the year, so that doesn't entirely discount the possibility of Virtual Fighter Six. I mean, there's always a chance, I guess. Yeah, Harada wouldn't just tease us like that, right? With the uh, <laughs> potential of Virtual Fighter Six coming in the future, I don't know. Yeah, what an asshole, Harada. Maybe means... you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. I think it's pretty interesting that he did that. He yeah, that post about shot. how he, you know, he's going up against Virtual Fighter in the past, and then it kind of seems like maybe he might be doing that in the future. Mm. 
I don't, know, I, don't, I don't get my hopes up. I've been hoping for Virtua Fighter 6 for a while now. So. <laughs> it's been like a decade now. <laughs> that came out. Oh, God. It's been 15 oh, years. Man. Well, since vanilla VF5. Crazy. Crazy. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of rounding out the Sega news. There's nothing else I read. It's all very vague, so... I think we can finally start on the meat and potatoes of the podcast, and that is Tekken 7, which just had a patch. It had a balance adjustment for, like, 10 characters, I think. The Mr. Ram was yep. released. His stage was released. Um, was there anything in the patch notes that you guys <laughs> thought was worth talking about? I mean, the most obvious one is the Kazuya Hell Sweep change, the Devil Jin Hell Sweep change. It definitely got people and heated. The electric one. I think the electric one's more important. Really, I I would say the Hell Sweep one is more important, but they're both pretty uh, <laughs> random buffs. Honestly, yeah. nobody really saw this coming. Because I I don't know if it's really hurting in the first place. I could still step Hell Sweep. But I had to be in a full sidewalk when I tested it. I don't know if that's some weird thing with Claudio, but yeah. It tracks better, but I don't think it's homing necessarily. But the mm -hmm. trying to whiff punish an electric is fucking nightmarish now. I played against Eric yesterday when he was Devil Jin. And granted, it's online, but I used to be able to pretty comfortably, like, good chunky whiff punishes on whiffed electrics. And, like, now, no, none of that. Like, it recovers so fast. Yeah, you probably, gone are the days that you can just launch it for free. <laughs> you I agree. I agree that the electric thing is a big deal. Cause that's like part of how I play against machines is if I think they're gonna electric, I just duck and then punish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Whereas I was like, like, well, now you can't do that. Yeah. Whereas like Hell Sweep didn't become safe or anything. I mean, I don't want to give Michael Murray any credit, but you still can duck and launch the shit out of that with a delayed hop kick. Like it's just better. Hell Sweep's better now. It's but it's better. still a risk for the Kazuya for the Mishima, yeah. you know? It does somewhat address the, the Mishima weakness of sidestep left though. For and plus like and Devil Jin. So it's like, not like a free you know, just step left against them and you're fine. <laughs> there there's Like I really don't think that the Hell Sweep change alone was gonna like vault them up and all of a sudden you're gonna see Kazuya's and Devil Jins everywhere. Like the electric thing is a big deal, but like I think it'll take a certain type of player to be able to take advantage of that. Like a really high skilled player is the person that's going to take advantage of that way more than, you know, like a mid range player. And I think the Hellsuit change isn't going to make you see like a wave of Kazuya's and Devil Jins out there. No. Making everybody afraid. But the thing is, like, the character, like, the, I don't know. The thing about it is, like, Kazuya has not gotten good results the, the entirety of the game, the entirety of the history of the game. Everybody's complaining they need to buff characters, buff characters. Like, maybe there's other ways they could have buffed him, but they buffed him. Like, let's see what happens. Let's see if Kazuya shows up. Let's see if Devil Jin shows up again. I think he's been buffed since season two, and he really didn't need this. He had, he has, like, access to a ton of damage with his new, like, back 2-1 move. Screw, you can do three electrics into it. That already, like, increases damage by a good chunk. Yeah, since yeah, season but I mean, three, he's made out like a bandit. Yeah. This, this is a character that still isn't represented at top level very much. He definitely isn't, but I think that's because he's not the best Mishima. Where often, if you have that execution, you're just going to play Devil Jin. But even Devil Jin isn't represented at a high level. Yeah, he, not yeah. anymore. Not anymore. He was, though. They nerfed Devil Jin, and then you stop seeing Devil Jin. And then, like, I don't know. I just feel like... I don't know. Did they just buff? They buffing characters. They should buff other characters, yes, but they're buffing characters like they're, they're just they're buffing characters buff. that they want to see more in tournament. I feel like they're just choosing characters out of list. Like, hey, we want this guy to pop up more or have uh, more recognizability with him because everybody knows this character. So let's buff him. That's what it seems like to me, honestly. Because otherwise, why the fuck would you leave? 
Lars and Gigas alone and give <laughs> electrics and a hell sweeps a buff. <laughs> I, will, I will say that I think that a big thing is like perception. Like people think it's okay for Kazuya and them to be good because they're high execution or whatever. But like nobody wants to lose to a lucky Chloe player. And if you buff Chloe, it's still the same character. People are still going to get salty when they lose to them. Regardless of how much effort they're putting in or whatever. And I think, like, say, for example, Eddie. Imagine if Eddie was better. It would be like no no bad player would ever be able to beat an Eddie player. If he was just, like, an all-around better character, no bad player would ever beat an Eddie player. It's we like already had made, that like, in Dalsim, Tag Team. Like, super top tier. If Dalsim was, like, super top tier, then everybody would go online, get their ass beat by Dalsims for, like, two weeks, and then quit the playing street fight. <laughs> but if they lose to, like, a Ryu, they're like, oh, you know, he's got a fireball. That's fair. He's got an uppercut. That's fair. Oh, I don't know about that one. People get really salty about fireball, 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 uppercut. <laughs> fireball. Okay, stand. but imagine <laughs> full screen. I don't even know my doll sim moves, but full screen heavy punch or whatever across the screen, just <laughs> blowing up rookies. Like imagine if Eddie was just like good and then also had his super evasive stance and his mix ups and everything. I mean, that was Scrubs are two. gonna die to Scrub gimmicks, anyways. So I, yeah, eh. but Scrubs would rather die to Kazuya because they think the person playing them is working harder than they are. But they, they don't know what a, was working players hard. Players are just pressing but It's just perception, really. But the new players don't even know that Kazuya takes execution. <laughs> no, it's it's like a meme in the community that Eddie's a button masher. Kazuya's are are like once they spend a little bit of time in the community, they'll be like, oh, Kazuya players are are revered they're like super good execution and they're big there's brain a, there's a pocket of that community who resent that idea and say kazuya is unga 50 50 bullshit <laughs> well i mean that's really the case <laughs> he's becoming that way i'm telling you with this new patch oh boy yeah like boa love is gonna go fucking bananas with this patch. oh yeah that's his play style <laughs> they just yeah. buffed his play style so that's gonna be fun um the other patch note I wanted to talk about was Claudio's 1-2 has lost all tracking, which is a massive nerf to him. Um, I, I think basically that was probably his best move, honestly, as weird as that sounds. I mean, it was kind of stupid, if you ask me. So it, I'm glad it got nerfed. It, it absolutely was stupid, but... It does make sense for the animation, for what it's worth. <laughs> um, so I guess so, that, uh, that seals the deal. You're a Fock main now. Goodbye, yeah. Claudio. <laughs> I mean, I, I, played, I played Claudio out of necessity, basically. So I'm glad I have an extra reason now to drop him. Um, the, I would the, say the other, the other big patch note thing was Akuma forward, 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 getting nerfed, and then... Red fireball. Red fireball is punishable yeah. now. Minus twelve. The four 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 nerf is pretty big, I would say, because of the way that Akuma's play. Mm -hmm. It's key. And they reduce sure. the damage on D three by three points, but still. To me, I I get that people want Akuma nerfs, but these nerfs seemed a little strange to me. Like I don't think anyone asked for a single one of those changes i mean i don't think the akuma players are asking for any changes no i mean and like I even the, like akuma people hate akuma. For, yeah. i think they were asking to get for akuma to get his throat slashed yeah well i mean people were like people who hated akuma wanted his damage nerfed and they wanted like shit like wall standing two and demon flip altered in some way personally i while standing two in a demon flip is pretty annoying, but I definitely think four 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 was kind of absurd. It's good, but I never heard a single person say that's what makes Akuma good. But if you, I think if you if you watch Akuma, like if you watch the top level Akuma players, four 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 is like it's kind of weird because if you watch like I feel like over time the four 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 usage has like skyrocketed. Like people just realize Akuma players realize four 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 is really good, so then more and more of them just started using it. Kind of like early in the geese days, a lot of geeses were doing side step four, and then now you don't see side step four nearly as much. I think it's like the meta they realized four 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 is actually kind of ridiculous. And so now, if you watch like these top Akuma players, it's a lot of four four four, and just it's kind of like Gen four four, you know? 
you just press it. If it counter hits, you're good. If it's blocked, you're plus. Well, I guess not in the Jin's case, but in Akuma's case. Yeah, I think Akuma really has to use that move because his range is so bad. So it it yeah, true. It's kind of his like only way to safely get in a lot of times. Um, yeah. I don't know. I personally, I still think he's probably in the top five with these changes. I think before the change, he was definitely the best in the game, and then now I think he's he's uh you know I think he's definitely in the top ten. I think he's definitely still really good. Like he's still yeah. going to delete you on hit. The things that were changed were not one hundred percent integral to his play style. Um, he still has the damage. A, I think Akuma's will find a way. I think yeah, they'll he'll be, be able to. Um, some other miscellaneous changes that, as I know, Horong got a fuckload of buffs. Um, who else got hella buffs? Lily got Lee some got really strange recently. ones. Lee, Lee got buff actually back four back short four recovery by five recovery. frames on whiff. Yeah, but it's just the first good. hit I've heard. The first hit, back four is just one hit. But, oh, they. I mean like back four three is what Lee's usually use. No, they just do back four. If you're thinking of the... It's like an insane keep out tool. And the fact that it has four frames less or five frames less with recovery is insane. Wait, is that the one that's like kind of like a wannabe forward four from the Mishimas? It sort of looks like that. He kind of like kicks and moves backwards, and he can go in a stance off of it. Yes, he goes off. He to, wants to. He goes into Hitman off of that, yeah. right? He can choose to. Okay, I think I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, I was thinking of a different one. But that move is really good, and it's even better now. So, so that's always if the Lee's using it right, it's hard to approach him. Your boys, if you're listening, it's your chance to shine now with the big boys. <laughs> this is your chance. <laughs> Lee's been buffed every patch since the dawn of Tekken 7. Let's see if he can finally make a single Let's see if top 64. And get a sponsor and then make it to TWT finals. <laughs> if that even happens this year. Yeah, if that True. even happens. And I mean, see, GM is watched. Sad part, like. Lil Majin is finally going to become a full-time like content creator slash player, and then there's no TWT. <laughs> Damn, a lot of people got fucked by this in- entire thing. <laughs> yeah, well, it just gives him more oh, time to clear. develop his Twitch stream, so he'll be good. Yeah, his Twitch seems pretty relatively popular for a Tekken player, so yeah, hopefully he can do that full-time. Yeah, Genie yeah. mentioned there was a bunch of Ling changes, and not a single one of them was a nerf, so... She got buffed overall, too. The biggest thing is that, uh, was it Mistrust being uh, minus 14 instead of minus 20? Yeah. Which was already weird to punish. So that's going to be even harder now. I mean, I yeah. think she needed it. I think they kind of over nerfed her. Yeah, Cuddlecore hasn't been doing people... too good lately. She's a character that people hate losing to. Her and Horan, I think. True. I complained about a lot yeah explain like that playing. george because there's a lot of popular xiao yu players <laughs> princess <laughs> ling tanukana uh oh, cuddle core sometimes you 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 why you 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 man fuck xiao yu i'm gonna just be straight up and plus yeah. i think i think there needs to be more xiao yu players in the community i think they're a good it's like a good, like, you know, there's, like, nerds and jocks and jockey players. It's like a good subset of the community. Dude, <laughs> Ling is worse than Chloe. Like, as far no, as, like, no, degeneracy. No, 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 no. What? This no, bitch no, 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 no. has oh, art yeah, I... of Phoenix. Yeah, that's pretty annoying, but it's okay, it's okay. It's Brian okay? Brian Hatchet Kick, plus five now from plus four. Just, just. It's pretty decent, decent buff. Fuck, the buffing is fifty-fifty. You can see this trend here in this patch. Yes, that's the trend. We're gonna get to that. Um, let's move on to fuck you, man. Um, what do we all think? Everybody knows what I think. I think he is a pretty cool character. I think he's probably gonna get some nerfs. I don't think he's like top one, but I think he's gonna get nerfed a little bit. 
in the future. He's definitely going to get touched up because there's some wonky shit with him right now in the current patch. Um, fucking grabbing him, or when he grabs you and you break it, it leaves him back turned for like a frame or whatever. <laughs> it's by design, bro. Window. Yeah, that shit too. His grabs are just jank in general. They need to <laughs> look at those. It's and all think, by design. I think his design, shit's huh? a little bit too... I think they're going to nerf his damage. I think his shit's a little bit too damaging. I would have to agree there. Um, I have no idea why hitting someone four times does 70 damage with no rage. <laughs> I mean, shit like... Uh, what is it? 3, 4 into 4, four 2, 1. Yeah, 67 damage. Back one should get nerfed. Uh, back back one's, one's fine, I hits. think. I don't think so. Back one is launch punishable, so... Sure, but you're using it as a punisher or, yeah. or whiff punisher. I mean, it's basically like nearly a launcher damage wise. I mean, it's like 50 something damage, plus if you have rage, then it's even more. I, th- yeah. I, just, I, I, don't know. I just feel like he has like such good punishment from, from 10 frames to 15 frames. Like, really? That's his play style, man. Punishment? Punishment? Punisher. And counter hits. I mean, it's not, it's not really counter here. It's more like mix-up, string mix-up. Yeah. To a degree. Making the opponent uncomfortable and making a bad decision. But he really, like, his kit is designed to, like, counter hit. Like, he has 3-4. He has down 4. He has the 1-1, one, one, which is really good. Um... Like, just, like, fundamentally, he has, like, a lot of weird things that a lot of characters don't have. Like, who has a 13 frame 3 in the game? That's, like, really weird. Uh, I'm pretty other, sure Josie, Josie does. Josie does, yeah. Yeah. The other kid Eddie has a Muay Thai fighter. 12 frame, but it's technically 4. Yeah, that, that don't even fucking count. <laughs> How does that not count? Because it is a 4. And it's a good character. Yeah, but it's basically the same thing. It's mid, safe, 12 frames. Yeah. Well, which one does 67 damage on counter hit? <laughs> Claudio is in back three, 12 frames. Back three has to counter hit in between, and that's not a three. Sure, but it's back three. I mean, what is the it being a three isn't that important. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right, but it is strange. I mean, I I think I do think it's three is over two. I think if they just reduce the damage on three four. I'd be fine. No, leave it the same. I don't think you should be. It's, it's silly that you. Do, that it's three, four, and then you get the knockdown into the combo. You take that knockdown or something like that. No, take that knockdown techable. I think it's it should stay. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, it's my yeah, turn. You tried to you tried to tear like, hole with Leroy. I mean, I'll still pick. I'll still play some Leroy. <laughs> Now it's my but time they to nerfed, shine. You know, they, they took him down. They took they nerfed his uh, ridiculous stuff, his overtuned stuff. Well. And so they'll do the same thing with Bach. It's my time to shine now. Yeah, for like two weeks, we'll let you shine. <laughs> I'll drop him so hard if 3-4 gets nerfed. I don't even think that's his, like, I mean, 3-4 is good. But Back forward so much 4 other good is shit. the best move in the game. It's, it's just like a Leroy situation. You say three four is the best move in the game? No, back forward four is the best move yeah, in the that, game. Yeah, that that one is absurd. <laughs> that one's pretty good. That one's pretty Electric good. Electric Godfoot. Like, sure, it has a little bit of whiff recovery, but like, if you see anyone even like coming it within your area code, you just hit it. And if they block it, they're in a super bad situation against a character with thousands of counter hit tools. What's it on block? It's like plus one, right? It's plus six on plus block. Plus six? A plus six. That's going to get nerfed. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then on like a, a hit. Plus one or something. On a hit, it does like 79 damage, normal hit. I bet they're going to make his uh, uncharged knee. They're going to make it like minus nine. They're going to make back four, four plus one. I don't know what else they're going to do. Nerf the damage on like this four, man, four, two, one or something like that. This man is a four. hater. When Leroy was out, George was like, no, nah, dude, this is all by design. Leroy is not that good. <laughs> Don't fuck with my boy Leroy. Don't worry. Don't worry. They're going to do fuck dirty just like they did Leroy. <laughs> this is all bitterness speaking from the Leroy nerfs. 
I'm just mad they didn't give me king buffs. Dog, king got buffed every patch. And I need more. He's not good enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to be done until he has... They just, like, remove the throw that Fakrum has right now, and they give it to King. I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> King's wall splat throw doesn't do 44 damage on splat. It doesn't. It doesn't. Imagine but, if Giant Swing only had a 14 frame tech window. That'd be a nightmare. <laughs> that'd be delicious. Give me that. It already <laughs> is hard as fuck to break. Let's get more actual grapplers in this game. I mean, give Gigas a yeah, throw. Put Gigas in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give King any more shit. Just give Gigas an actual throw mix up. Give King Gigas's throw. <laughs> Just delete Gigas and give <laughs> all Gigas's moves to King. King Goliath stance. That's what they should do. They should do like do a Gigas charity, take all of his moves and just give one move to each some other character. <laughs> just get rid of the character. Dude, I would be so hype if fucking Claudio had forward one plus two. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets Gigas one two? Fuck him rum. <laughs> oh please. No, that's, that's uh Fuck, I don't know who gets that one. Give it to Asuka. Give it to Skuba. <laughs> give her a good jab punish for once. Yes, finally she has yeah. a jab punish. Actually, give it to Miguel. Maybe That'd be tight. Well, he can't even use it with his T-Rex arms. That's why it'd be funny. <laughs> Go from one extreme <laughs> to the other. Um. Oh, oh, they're giving it to Roger Jr. No, let's see. Oh, leave He's the four. fucking animals out. One already made it in, so I think that's yeah. that'll uh, satisfy all the furries out there. <laughs> One's enough. One is enough. Um, so, I mean, I think we all kind of are on the same page as far as thinking that Fock is kind of maybe top five, top three. He's pretty fucking good. That's big words. That's big words. He's, he's pretty good. He's, I think he's upper mid-tier. Upper mid. Okay, I'll take the seat. Why does he need nerfs, George? My man Dame here got my back. I think his moves Why are does good. He need nerfs? Good, not perfect characters could still need nerfs, you know? <laughs> man, this man. You don't have to be perfect to need a nerf. Don't put this man in charge of balancing in my neck of the woods. <laughs> I wish they would put me in charge of balancing. <laughs> you would have. I wish they put someone who actually played the game in charge of balancing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just get one Tekken game where King is the undisputed best character in the game? I was going to say, he would be God Rugal tier if you were in charge. Just give me a week when they accidentally fucking buff something on King. Just give me a week. <laughs> just a week of best King is the best character in the game. Then you can make him shit. Just one little bit on King. I want to say that King already started out day one a great character in 7. And then they just kept buffing him over and over and over. And he gets absolutely no results. And he's still not even top 10. So he needs more buffs. His best result so far was uh, Little Majin's run at Evo that one year. Yeah, that was it, man. Top three. That was it. Top three, baby. Beating JDCR at, at like, I guess he I think wasn't that was at the anymore, time. But... Or maybe it still is. Wasn't that at the time the biggest Tekken tournament? Yeah, probably. So, King's the yeah. third best character in the game. <laughs> Doesn't need any buffs, man. What about Armor King? Yeah, why would he need buffs? Armor King? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Helen needs buffs. buffs. Helen needs buffs. They forgot, like, some of the characters. Some... God, they, yeah. Same. They should have buffed Armor King, but instead they buffed Electrix. <laughs> What about Dark Upper, man? Come on. They didn't even... Yeah, make that three frames faster on Wade. Come on. <laughs> he wants to be a Mishima, too. Oh, good old Namco and their balancing. Um, the Armor King buffs are coming. I feel it. I'm Genie calling for a Dark Electric. I'm hoping Dark Give Electric is in our future. Nah, we don't need that. Well, you know, neither does Mishima's, but they have it. <laughs> <laughs> um poison fist genie's talking nonsense now <laughs> why don't we just invite him to this call it's impromptu yeah, <laughs> he's already on the, the the board poison today. effects to the game turn this into an rpg or something um wait a second 
I think we should, we should talk about the state of the game. Yeah, make it sound so important. We're getting we're getting to that. Um, before that game. though, I wanted to get to. For some reason, I see on my Twitter timeline like every single person who looks like a Zoomer is super super pissed at Tekken Seven and like saying they're gonna uninstall or they're gonna quit I've Tekken. Seen that too, yeah. Um, mm. what the fuck is going on with that? <laughs> you know, my opinion on that is like, like, my opinion on it is so. Everybody's saying, oh, I'm going to quit Tekken or I'm, the game has changed and all this type of stuff. The way I see it, like, for, from what I'm doing in the game, the way I'm playing the game, it's not, it doesn't change that much. Like, they say the meta is bad or whatever. To me, it's not even changing that much. Like, you know, from season two to season three, from season one to season three, like, say, for example, I'm king and I fight against a Steve player, the game hasn't actually changed that much. The stuff that I'm doing in a matchup hasn't actually changed that much. Like, if I'm fighting, like, a lily or a leo or a whatever pick a character probably hasn't changed that much even throughout the course of the, the game like certain moves are a little bit stronger certain moves are a little bit weaker but the actual game is basically the same when leroy came out it was sucked to fight a leroy but like the rest of the game is still the same like fox came out but all the other matchups of all the characters that didn't get buffed or touched is going to be the same so, like the game is uh, still pretty similar to the way it was before it's weird to me that this patch is the one where people are like, oh, that's too much. That's that's where I draw the line. Yeah. Here, here's what's changed from one to three. That's most apparent to me. Just like the damage in the wall yeah. carry, everything got t- turned up to eleven across the board. So like, that's the patch they should be yeah. mad about. Which is There's one less mix up. That, you need. that is my main complaint about Tekken. Is that the right now the damage is too high. That's my main complaint too right now. And that started high. a long time ago. That started in like season two point five. But my thing, it's just like it's people are asking for buffs and buffs and buffs and buffs. And this is what happens when things just get buffed and buffed and buffed and buffed with no like normalization or no like standard. Well, yeah, it. I don't understand why Leroy and this patch have caused so much distress when all of their problems are rooted like a year ago. Shit, even more than that. It, like, I feel like we've been in this meta for so long. Like, Lucky Chloe isn't like a top tier character. And not even necessarily matchup wise, it's not really anything special. But her combos do so much damage. It's insane. It's stupid. Like, that makes me not want to play Tekken is when a Lucky Chloe <laughs> combos you and does like 65% health in one combo. And you'd be like, oh, she's a bad character otherwise. But it's like, it's still it's ridiculous. I've Some of the damage is just like ridiculous. When I see like Kazuya do their wall ender, and it's like do like what is it down forward one four into like that other the other two hits right after that. One First of all, two. that's a long ass wall combo, and second of all, the damage is ridiculous. Yeah, I honestly think that wall ender is like a glitch because he does he does a wave dash into wall standing four, and then he does down forward one four, and then he does one plus two, and he gets technically it too many look hits. Like it should hit. It's like too many hits for a wall combo. It's probably just because that one plus two is two hits or whatever in one move. Yeah, for sure. See, but the I interesting, mean, the interesting thing is I don't think he gets one plus two after down forward uh, one four um, normally. Yeah, he, he doesn't. Does the, the wall standing four starter. So he has so to do wall standing four, four like, to yeah. do it. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, so it I seems just think that. Are right, you you talk you talk. Oh no! I was, it, it seems like it's a bug, like Fox throw, and I think he should get it taken away if Fox gets his taken away. <laughs> I mean, I'd be fine with that. I think they need to change. Like, I just think like the wall damage is insane. Like the game's like centralized alone. What's weird about that is the wall damage was worse in Tekken Six and in Tag Two. But I think it's the fact that we're going to the wall so often, and that's the problem. Where it's like every yeah, everybody, single every hit. character can get to the wall with their like B and B, basically. I mean, their B and B is just designed for the wall. Yeah. And then it's like, you get them to the wall, you do big meaty wall ender, and then you get Oki off of that wall ender, and then it's like, oh, you're in a fifty-fifty. I'm gonna do my wall splatting mid, or my low, or whatever, and then it's like, oh, I'm fucked. Yeah. It's like I cannot my think of a character. On, my plus on hit low, and then it's like, oh shit. 
can't think of a char- again. Yeah, can't think of a character in the game that at round start can't do just like a combo and you're in, you end up in a wall and 50-50 to death like immediately. <laughs> the ones that can't are really bad characters, like Gigas. I don't know if there is one that can't. Gigas probably could. I don't know the combo. Actually, his, yeah, his new. But, uh, although in Gigas, in Gigas case, I mean, I don't know. His his regular combo does a lot of damage just because he gets those unscaled hits and. Yeah. He also did get a new, like, wall carry string with that down 3-1 or whatever. Yeah. That one does add wall carry. But, I mean, still, like, Gigas isn't doing much wall carry. And he's a bad character because of that. And a lot of saying they things. sound like they should buff movement. Buff movement and delete tail spins. I just spins. feel like... <laughs> I just feel like... I don't know. If they buff movement and you have like Korean players or like good players that's just moving out of everybody's mix ups and everybody's stuff, I think that's gonna like get a different reaction to people. I don't know if people really want like buffed movement. The top players definitely want that, but I don't know if like the average Joe really wants buffed movement. Well, you could look at Tag Two versus Seven. Tag Two was the least popular Tekken game of all time. And all that was was Korean backdash into sidestep, Korean backdash into sidestep, into dark upper for the entirety of its lifespan. So I don't know. Maybe you are on to something. I mean, that's the thing. If you increase the movement, the game becomes. I mean, the game's already kind of defensive, although I think they're trying to move away from that. But like, if you increase the movement, it's going to be way more defensively, which I don't really mind because, you know, I love me some infinite stage. I'll run away forever. But like. <laughs> I mean, there's like a set with um, a tag two set. It's me versus JDCR at final round. And like so many rounds in that go to timeout. And they're just like moving, wavy, wavy, back dash, sidestep. It's crazy. Tag two was a really weird game because it had such a good movement. And, and uh, like with punishing was such a big deal because of the uh, you could tag. Uh, yeah. So... In general, damage was higher in Tac 2, but it really came down to the fact yeah. that not everyone could put you at the wall in one hit. Right. So it was kind of like, it really... I would say one thing I really liked about Tag 2 was the tag crash. I liked being able to, like, it was like a risk, but you could potentially spend a resource to, like, basically escape from an Oki situation. Yeah. It, it, I do think it was one of those things that was needlessly complex, maybe, especially when you factor in Netsu and all this ridiculous yeah, if you learned, shit. like, all that system, it was pretty... It was complex, but it's kind of interesting in retrospect. It was interesting. That's why I like stuff like Rage. I hope they add more, like, more kind of, like, meter, but not, like, meter. It was more like, here's a resource, use it, when you want to or kind of i wish they at this point if they're not going to fix the universal wall carry i want them to seriously consider adding a burst mechanic <laughs> burst and Whoa. i mean i actually wouldn't depending on how it's implemented as you know as long as it's not like some actual explosion type shit a literal burst i actually wouldn't mind if it was something kind of tag crashes ish um... Well, the I thing, wouldn't actually mind. The thing about Burst is you can bait it, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, you could do the same with Tag Crash. Tag Crash was so, so if, fucking if hard something... to bait. You couldn't block the Tag Crash, <clears throat> whereas right. you block the Burst and you launch them. There's a, there's a couple ways you could do it. There's like I know with Kane you could do like backwards Jaguar step if you spaced it right, but I can never do it. <laughs> yeah, listen to yourself okay. talk. You got to time the backwards <laughs> Jaguar yeah, step. Yeah, but it was cool, though. It was cool. You could even do like... You could raw tag and then dodge the tag crash and then punish them with your incoming character. Tag tag two was cool. It had a lot of cool stuff. Like the you could <laughs> tag the character and then they'd be considered running when they came in. Yeah, so, so you could like tag them and do a running slide or <laughs> tag them and do like a running three or whatever. It was pretty cool. Because like raw tag was actually like a thing you could do. You could raw tag for a whiff. You could make somebody whiff with raw tag and then punish with the incoming character. Yeah, <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> I do like or some of the like, mechanics. Um. um random shit that was pretty funny like you could do if you tagged in miguel you would do his taunt and for some reason you could taunt before you could do anything else so you would do his taunt and cancel it into block and so it would allow you to block the tag in earlier so miguel was a little bit safe and so you just like do his laugh but then you're safe it's pretty cool or like jack could fly in there's a lot of cool stuff. 
Oh yeah, I I do remember the Jack fly in. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. It was cool. I'm in. I I like some of the the tag two mechanics. I'm not but... saying take an eight a tag game, but no, yeah, certainly not. Um, I I also just hate tag mechanics. So yeah, it, tag was a hard sell, but um, hindsight's twenty twenty. One thing I will say is an early. T7, the spring kick used to be like a couple frames faster, and it was actually like a kind of like an escape option. It it is now, but not a very good one. But it was really good in like early Tekken 7. The problem is, is we need to do something that stops them from taking us from one wall to the other wall. <laughs> so true, true. We can't Some spring kind of like, kick in between, like that MK the Fallout thing or whatever. We just fall out of combo. I yeah, I would take fallouts cuz actually fallouts are kind of lame because in Mortal Kombat 11 when people fall out, they can choose which hit to fall out because they know which hit of the combo is punishable when they fall out so they can get up and whiff punish you. So I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> it's fucking dumb. That's why I I said burst specifically over that because at least you can play around burst. Well, honestly, what Tekken should do is just get rid of bound or screw and just make people do dash jabs. Again. Damn, that's back to Tekken two days. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what back to I'm. DR. I would love that. I mean, I would even take bound coming back, which for me saying that is strong because I hate bound. Uh, they if they bring back bound, just they need to do a little bit better job of it because in previous games like king had the had his four two string that he doesn't have anymore it was basically only to give him a bound like the only reason he had that string was so he could bound like king has had strings in that game that was basically just like okay you're gonna bound with this string and you're not gonna use it for anything else that kind of was pretty common honestly because with at least with the the screw like king, a lot of king's screw moves are moves that he's actually doing. he's like four four one uh down four two one Back two four or what is it two one? Like those are all moves that King's actually going to use. Yeah. Um, In a match, so. Yeah, it's kind of the mechanics are. I don't want to say parasitic, but they're definitely. I don't know. Maybe not parasitic. Homogenize the cast. That's a better way to put it. Where it used to be really cool to watch Lee and Nina take you from wall to wall because they were the only fucking ones who could do it and it took so much execution it's not hype to watch some fucking random ass jobber do a super easy julia combo and take you from wall to wall <laughs> <laughs> um you know i got it. i got it the perfect idea so in the next second second eight keep bound or bring back bound keep screw and then they need to add like a, a third one and then it like shoots them up in the air. Oh, it sounds like Kohime. I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. No. And so then the three of them, they like, you know, balance it around the characters and everything. And then certain moves do certain things. And then that's kind of how they create like this character has this much wall carry. This character can combo off of other moves that normal characters can't because they have a, let's call it like a volcano screw or something like that. You could pay me for that one, Namco. <laughs> You are really wanting this fucking bring back bound but keep screw idea, and it's it's sus. This podcast is gonna get me a spot on the Namco team. <laughs> I mean, we we predicted a lot of things so far into the future, so maybe this will come come to fruition. I'm gonna become well. I'm gonna become Harada's <laughs> personal chef, and then I'm just gonna whisper in his ear and be like, bring back. <laughs> I mean, his translator became the lead dude for Tekken, so it might just happen to you, George. Just become a chef. I'm in there. You'll get promoted. I'm in there. <laughs> You'll make bad <laughs> balance decisions and everyone will hate you on Twitter. <laughs> yes. Hey, I'm not gonna make any bad balance decisions. Everyone oh, will love me. They're gonna you're gonna make all king buffs. <laughs> yeah, all king buffs and you're not gonna get yelled at. People love King. They love watching him. <laughs> He's the people's champion, man. You they give love him. You give it's King gonna be like Leroy the Tekken, buffs. The Tekken two ending when all those kids run up to King. But it's gonna be the fan base. <laughs> They're gonna run up to me. I'm just gonna put my hands up like King. This man needs to be arrested before <laughs> this happens. Um Don't worry, it's gonna work. <laughs> I guess 
that was the end of my list, but I kind of want to know what you guys think would be a good top five characters in Tekken 7 right now. What's your top five, Dame? I mean, yeah. the character list. Top five. I'll have to do the same. Let me, let me bust out the tier list Let here. me start for <laughs> once, actually. I think, personally, Leroy is still number one. Um... I think right below him, still oh, with the nerfs, is Akuma. I would have flip-flopped them pre-Akuma nerf. And then I'm going to go out on a limb and say Kazuya is number three now. And then, maybe a weird choice, but I still think Law is very good. And number five is Fuck You Man, straight up. Hmm. Yeah, honestly, my list would be pretty similar. I'd still have Akuma and Leroy up there, and Mishima's are definitely bumped up. So Kazuya and Devil Jin would be there as well. Um, For the last spot, though, it's kind of a toss-up. I think a lot of the characters in this game are kind of at like that, you know, that same level, and you can make an argument for any of them. You could make an argument for a lot of characters right now. I would say my top five. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rank Fox because I think it's too early. Um, I think number one is I would have said Akuma if he hadn't gotten nerfed in this patch, but I'm gonna say Leroy is number one. Uh, I'll say Akuma's number two. Number three, I would probably have to say Zafina. Zafina. Number four. Honestly, I'll probably say TBH. TBH. <laughs> That's a was that a DLC? Did I drop? What happened? Did I drop? What happened? I... Oh fuck, I just ruined the call. I'm so good at this. Don't worry, boys. We'll get it back. We have one more section left. <laughs> back online, boys. <laughs> I just, like, left what the happened? call really quick. Uh, <laughs> go on, George. Sorry. All right. So, number four. We good? You were at TBH. And then I said, what, okay. is TBH some DLC I haven't heard of? And then it dropped. <laughs> All right. Number four and five are going to be controversial. I'm going to say number four is Marduk. Wow. Hmm, that's really high for Duck. I think the character is nutty. He is I think nutty. He's bonkers. And number five, and you guys are not gonna agree with this, but I'll fight to the death on this one. I think number five is Jack Seven. <laughs> and we want this Jack man Seven. to be part of the balancing team. I think Jack Seven is good as fuck. He's good, but top five? Yeah, dude. he's one of the only characters that gets consistent results. Well, I That's mean, good other people than that are good at the game that play him. <laughs> There's like two people that play him. Well, those two people are really fucking good. Anakin, and they've Come shown on. that 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 character can beat every other character in the cast. Well, let's go back to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the card. Hey, guess who won the TWT Once Upon a Time? Is Kuma I and Panda? About Number one? I forgot about Geese. No. <laughs> Kuma and Panda didn't have the results that Jack Seven has. Kuma and Panda won the Jack biggest Tekken Seven. tournament. How many tournaments has Kuma and Panda won? I'm pretty sure that was the first tournament that ranked you one in the TWT. Right, po post season one, how many tournaments has Jack won? Let me flip the, the question on you. <laughs> yeah. Kuma's uh, won. How more. many has he top threed? Kuma <laughs> has not won more than tournaments than Jack post. What you call it? I go to I could go to Anakin's page on the TWT website right now, and he would have won a couple tournaments. Which Anakin Jack. is hella good. <laughs> he okay, has a lot of what? presence are, across you guys, America. You guys are saying, you guys are saying uh, all these characters like a Kazuya. Kazuya hasn't won shit. You're what? saying Kazuya I mean, Akuma just had got really buff. good players playing him. I don't even remember who else you guys were saying because they were irrelevant. Jack Seven is top five. <laughs> 
Well, I first would actually, of all, the only thing I the only thing I would reconsider. I forgot about geese. Uh, I maybe would put geese over oh, yeah, Marduk. Geese. I'd be I put geese in the top five too. Actually, he'd be my fifth. But spot. I, I think Marduk is pretty nutty. I think he's a good character. Well, then why are you a putting Marduk character. up there? He ain't one shit. Uh, have you seen what the John was doing right before the end of the TWT? I mean, I saw, but that isn't any results of Jack Seven's caliber. Um, yeah, but <laughs> then I'm just going on theory. That's what I. <laughs> I was going off theory with Kazia because I think these. But I go off. I go off a mix of theory and results. Well, Mark was getting results, but then the TWT ended, and now there isn't a second TWT. Kazuya has, has always done well wins. in tournaments. Kazuya? Yes. No. He's always been. Name a name. Who's the Kazuya players out there? There's Nee sometimes. Who else? You got Nee. You got Bo Love. You got Bo Love has gotten a couple good wins for sure. What's that Japanese How one? How many top eights has he gotten? Hold What's... on, throughout throughout Tekken Seven, we can agree that for the most part, Kazuya has been better than Heihachi, right? Yeah. But Heihachi has won more tournaments because of JDCR. <laughs> yes. I mean, if you would have asked me season one, I would have said Heihachi was better than. Well, that's because mm. he probably was then. Yeah. For the majority of Tekken 7, yeah, probably it was better. But, I mean, you know, we're, we're comparing apples and oranges for the most part. But they the, both ain't winning shit. I mean, the only Mishima that's ever won anything was Devil Jin. And and I, when he did win, I thought he was... I thought, you know, season one, I thought Devil Jin was far and away the best character in the game. Which is funny because he doesn't have these Jack 7 results. He has just Okay, but dons. now he's not the best anymore. He's not the best anymore now. Even then, Qdons was the only one. Well, Nii. But Nii could literally win with Lily, so it doesn't count. Okay, but I don't know what you're saying here. What's your argument? These, these, this patch has yet to see any tournaments. Yeah. So let's hold our, let's reserve our opinions for now and see how this, <laughs> how, how well this ages. <laughs> yes. Jack seven top five. Jack seven top five. All right, all right. Everyone is entitled to their their top five. I mean, Jack seven. I mean, you gotta at least give him that he has, if not one of, if not the best lows in the game. He does. True. And he's got solid ass mids, solid ass whiff punish, solid ass combos. His combos are consistent, like from almost any range. He's got. <laughs> he's a good ass character. He's got throw mix up. He's got. I mean, what doesn't he have? What's he missing? Wall carry. Genie says that's a bad take. Damn. He doesn't need wall carry. All the stages are tiny. You're in a sardine can most of the game. Genie wall Sensei carry. does not approve. He doesn't need the wall carry. He has actually wall carry. They gave him a wall carry string on this patch. On season three. They gave him a wall carry string to end his combos. But it's like such a bad one. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we're gonna go we're gonna revisit this in one Jack year. And you guys I'm... are talking about Jack needs the wall carry. Every character in the game can take you to the wall from mid screen on a standard size stage. I would say Jack has one of the harder times doing that. No, he does not. He does his staple, like is I fuck around with Jack on player match, and Jack can take you to the wall just fine. And he pushes you towards the wall with the four four one type of stuff. Or just getting up in your face. He does, but I mean literally everyone can do that. Jack does it very well. Not as well anymore because Ford Ford One um, did get nerfed after season one, so I think that's a big reason why I wouldn't put him in top five anymore. Look at look at you're putting when Jack Anakin Seven is, over Kazumi. Look look at what look at Anakin when he's on his game, and it looks like Jack is the most dominant character in the game. It looks yeah, like in, he can't even in, do in the shit. next set he plays, he gets washed like six zero by me. Or he does just as good with Paul. No, he does not. I mean. I, his Paul is as good. No, it's I mean, not. The There's same a reason he doesn't play Paul. Joey Fury. When's the last time he played Paul? Joey Fury needs to play more Marduk. I would. Well, he, I think he just exclusively plays Marduk now, doesn't he? I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which well, Joey, is also he had a Paul, and he, he's he's had results with him, but yeah, he ain't I mean, been yeah, he winning with Paul. Duck. Duck's good. Duck's good. <laughs> Okay, let's review. I mean, let's probably, review before we to get to bitch over, cars. Probably give, give it to geese over duck. Now that I remember geese, Ganryu is not top five. Um, let's see here. Once Saint comes, when Saint comes back, when he resurrects, then he'll be top five. 
So Georgia's top five was like Akuma, Leroy, Marduk, uh, Jack Seven, and wh- who? Zafina. 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 Yeah. So it was thirty. Zafina, interesting as well. Dame, yours was Akuma, Leroy, Kazuya, Devil Jin, and I put Geese in the last spot. Okay, perfect. And mine was, I mean, our our top two is the same universally, and then my third was Law. Fourth was, uh, fuck, I don't remember what I said, to be honest. I think you had Mishima's up there, too. Yeah, I caused you a third, and then, fuck, it was, I know, fuck, I, I, I selected five preemptively. Um, but our top two is the same, so that means that the game is probably, those two characters need further nerfs, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, let's move on to before we bitch call. I want you guys to plug any streams or social media you got if you want. Sure, sure, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> make a Twitter, George, so you can we can follow each other. It'll be great. You can post all kind of tech stuff on there. All those. Uh... <laughs> I knew this part was gonna be good because George was just gonna be like, "I ain't got shit, homie." <laughs> shit plug. Follow me on Twitter at dame underscore yen. Easy and uh, I might I might stream from time to time on Twitch too. So, and that's the same Dame underscore Yen, right? Around. Yep, yep, yep. Dame underscore. Maybe we should get yen. into the streaming thing. Start some Katana Zero streams. Everybody hey, from the scene it, is man. streaming. Indie games are perfect. I'm guessing I don't know anything about streaming, so dog will set I you up. I could get my mouse to work, so <laughs> probably should hold back on the hey, streams. If Genie can handle it, you can handle it, George. I believe in you. I haven't seen a Genie stream yet. Oh, you need to see Genie stream, man. <laughs> it's just, it's like a horror movie of like, <laughs> like shrieking mic sounds. Um, so George, you ain't got shit and nope. e- everybody is, knows my Twitter. No, actually my Twitter, not many people know of. I don't even know what it's called. Uh... I it made like it in Mr. like Mr. Clue or whatever. Is it okay? Yeah, that makes sense. M R K L O U X, and then my Twitch. You're on it right now, or if you're watching from YouTube, it's any underscore M K L. So who's got a bitch ready and willing? All right, I'll oh, I'll start off with uh, got it. with some props here. Props to. Uh, Everyone who stayed inside during these past couple of weeks for quarantine. <laughs> Shout outs for sure. Shout outs. Wash your hands. Hella wash your hands. Uh, okay, so the bitch calling. Who am I going to call a bitch? It's kind of hard since we haven't had any locals, so it's going to be an exclusive uh, Discord bitch calling. Mark, you got to park. You got to post the right things in the right places. <laughs> <laughs> you have some Street Fighter going on in the anime channel going on <laughs> i was really thinking about yeah, making together. mark my bitch calling because he made me catch a hundred dollar <laughs> money match <laughs> it was all him i had nothing to do with it all right that's all i had go ahead george uh my shout outs mm. I, don't know, I guess uh, shout out to Mike for the offline session. Shout oh. out to Mike for setting up the podcast. Cool. Oh, warming my little heart. <laughs> Thank you for I mean, I think, coming. I think out. shout outs to the. Uh, I feel like I like the like everybody's kind of streaming a little bit, even though everybody's inside, so you can still see the the community and everything. See what everybody's doing. Hell yeah, that's a good shout out. And then my bitch calling. I don't really have a bitch, but I'll just say you lies to the bitch because he's playing Animal Crossing and isn't <laughs> listening to this podcast live. <laughs> Good. Damn you. I'm lied. into that one too. I'm into that one. Um, my shout out is gonna go to the Lord God Emperor Donald Trump for giving me twelve hundred dollars. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Trump bucks. Trump bucks. Pretty money for us. Big shout out to my man Donald. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 
Hey, I heard Canada was getting 2K for like four months. What about us? Fuck. <laughs> Trudeau is yeah, well, going ham. Donald Trump couldn't give us real money. And then for Canada's my bitch call. showing us up right now. It's going to be Donald Trump again. Because that motherfucker be saying he's going to open the country in like a week. <laughs> and we have the highest recorded cases of Corona oh. in the world right now. And that motherfucker wants to just say, nah, the economy's getting fucked. But, you know, it's a two-sided coin. He he's giving me money. Can't be that mad, but he's also you know just an idiot still. So yeah, we 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 haven't <laughs> the worst of it yet. It's gonna keep climbing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> April's gonna be fun. Um, so oh, what? TLF I, on Easter? I got another bitch calling actually. Dual bitch calling. I want to call myself a bitch for saying that Corona was not as a big of a deal <laughs> as it is now. Yeah, I was waiting for that. It was I was a, waiting for that one. It was a tiny bit of a bad take. I still think it's a blown out of proportion, a slight, tiny, tiny bit. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll just give you, I'll just give you the benefit of the doubt as there's been a lot of misinformation and everything yeah. flying around. So there's so much. It's hard for anybody to to really know what's actually going on. Yeah. It's hard to grasp a situation until your friends lose their jobs and everybody <laughs> dies. So it's <laughs> well, you know. Again, I I've, need been, to... I've been following it, and there's a lot of you get like there's a lot going on from like everywhere, every direction. So it's hard to know what's actually true and what's not. That's what... you hear one thing one second, and then you hear another thing another second. Yeah. The third bitch calling social fucking media. <laughs> Because it's obnoxious. Man, going in. Everybody's going in, and it's, like, so hard to tune the people who don't know shit out. And the people who actually know something about it are getting drowned out. Oh, sorry. This didn't... I didn't intend for this to be a soapbox for me. But, yeah. It kind of <laughs> kind of became that way. Um, but, yeah. I think we're all going to be staying indoors for another month, so hopefully we can get another podcast or two in with actual fighting game news but i wouldn't hold your breath guys um i think that's pretty much it for us anything else you guys want to say mm, i don't know jack top five jack top five dame last word uh Play Kohime. <laughs> there we go. Now the podcast is complete. I didn't think it was going to make it this week. All right, guys. We shall see you in June. <laughs> Have a good one. Peace out. <laughs>